we have come again to discuss something and here we have class 4 subject science and chapter 6 for digestion what are the learning objectives today? the learning objectives are parts and stages of the digestive system microbes teeth and tooth decay so to begin as the introduction all the, all the organisms need food whether it is unicellular, whether it is multicellular and whatsoever it is so food is required to continue the nutrition children the nutrition follows five stages one is ingestion that means putting the food into the mouth second is digestion that simplification of food because our body cannot take the food directly into the bloodstream they have to be simplified like liquid and then they are to be sent to the various parts of the body where the, in the cells there is a particular organ which is known as mitochondria it converts the energy so we need to simplify the food and this is known as digestion well so what did i say the first step of nutrition is ingestion second step is digestion now if the things are digested is the process completely done for nutrition no my child it's not done it is here to see ingestion in ingestion digestion after that absorption the food has been digested simplified and then whatever is not required in the body that goes as excretory matter and whatever the essential food that has been absorbed by the body what happens absorbed by the body that means it is sent to the bloodstream and that is the absorption after the absorption what is the process or what is the actually cause of absorption because every human being or every living being requires energy to work you are sleeping you are using energy you are talking you are using energy you are eating something you are using energy you are studying something you are using energy you are playing with it you are playing football you are watching the game everything you use up the energy so to produce the energy the food has been absorbed and then it is assimilated so what is the fourth part is assimilation that means breaking the food breaking the food into energy and finally digestion digestion means whatever the excess of things which is not required by the body harmful toxic and excess that has been thrown out so we have now the steps of nutrition now after that one of the steps of nutrition is digestion we have to discuss that so what is food? Food is nothing but the chemical energy. Actually it is the solar energy because all the energy comes from the sun. And the solar energy is being converted into the chemical energy. And in chemical energy it is converted and that is kept in food. And this chemical energy further breaks into kinetic energy for the body to work, to pass the body. So food is chemical energy and then why is it needed? I just have explained it. It is needed to do all the activities. Sleeping, eating, reading, dancing, studying, playing, whatever it is. It is required. Well, let's see digestive system. One of the five stages digestive system. The digestive system has various parts and the stages also. Well, the human digestive system is as follows. You see a human being and they have the digestive system here. The tongue. You see the tongue? And in the tongue, you have different taste buds are there. My dear children, if you take a small green chili and if you just break it and touch at the tip of your tongue, you feel very hot because that is the place where the tongue has the taste buds for hotness which you call jhal and then you see when you eat too many sweets near your throat at the end of the tongue 
you feel little bit discomfort. It looks giddy. Why? Because that is the place where the taste marks of sweetness is there. So there are several taste marks of there. The tongue, which works according. And then the taste marks are followed by the salivary glands. The salivary glands are glands which produces enzymes. This is the enzyme which breaks the starch into sugar partially. This enzyme is known as tyrin. P T Y L I N. L I N. P T Y L I N. That is tyrin. It is also known as you are very small to know salivary amylase. Salivary amylase. Tyrin is nothing but the name of the saliva. Then we have the teeth there. We will discuss teeth later on, but you should know. When we put the food inside our mouth, that is ingested, at first we chew this. Like that. There are four kinds of teeth are there. The teeth from, you see, four here and four there are known as the incisor. What are they known as? Incisor. Then, two on the upper jaw, two on the lower jaw, pointed ones, which can hook, which can tear. They are known as canine. Canine you find more sharper in the dogs, cats, tiger, lion, etc. In predators, the canine is very sharp. And then we have the premolars and at last molars. The incisor cuts and the canine tears and holds, premolar crosses and molar grinds. Why grinding is required? Because if the food is grinded nicely, it will be very nicely mixed with the saliva. Because I told you the rice will start in the mouth. It starts in the mouth. And there is the appendage which is known as tongue. Tongue works as a spatula. That means uh, you see your mother or aunts are cooking food, then they use the Iron spatula, what is in uh, Bengali called Kunti, or in uh, Hindi it's called something like that. So, the, by which they steer nicely. A big one, spoonless, by made of steel or iron. Like that. So, that work is done in the body by tongue. Tongue mixes the chewed, crossed food very nicely with the saliva. Then it is sent through the food pipe. Food pipe is scientifically known as esophagus and this food pipe is a straight pipe but it is very narrow then you can ask me why the narrow food will how will you take the food it is narrow because if you take the food and eat it was i mean why then food have been dropped directly into the stone now what if something dropped into your body diet you feel pain so with every loaf of food or every I mean, part of food you had taken earlier, if there was no narrow food pipe, then you would have gone and hit the stomach and you would have said by each and every food like that, oof, but it's not happening. Why it's not happening? Because this narrow, yesterday as a food pipe, is very elastic. It's elastic and the food comes down through it along with its wall. Now see my children, this is the food pipe and the food goes like this. Do not go like this, directly goes touching the wall. And when it goes touching the wall, you see the food pipe will show like this. Why this swelling? This swelling is there because food is coming and getting this swelling. So, food pipe goes like this. And this movement is known as Peristalsis. What is known as peristalsis? Peristalsis is the movement by which the food slides down the food pipe and enters into the stomach. By which the stomach never gets a pain or injury. So your food enters the stomach. Sometimes you put the food and you feel it is spoiled or something is wrong, then you vomit it out. Isn't it so? Ah, what a food it is. 
What is it you know? That is called anti peristalsis. What is known as anti peristalsis. This anti peristalsis means peristalsis the movement comes over here, anti peristalsis the movement goes like this. And by that, we form it. When the food is stale or spoiled, we get the bad taste or something is wrong, very, very hot, which we cannot eat. Okay, then we vomit it. The vomiting comes by antibiotics and getting food into the stomach comes by antibiotics. So, understood? Well, from the stomach, from the esophagus, food body enters into the stomach. Now, stomach is a bag like that. And the stomach has two parts. The one which starts at, at the other, near the heart, it is not known as cardiac stomach. And the lower part is known as pyloric stomach, and this small part is known as fibrous. So, in the stomach, there are a lot of enzymes are there. What enzyme? Gastric juice. What is this gastric juice contains? It contains hydrochloric acid. What is it? Why is there hydrochloric acid? We will die. No, my dear, we will not die. What happens, you know? Every now and then, we are breathing, we are taking something. Through our mouth, we are taking plenty of germs, plenty of germs with that. And along with the food also, we are taking plenty of germs. So, food is being crushed and very nicely mixed with saliva and enters to the food part of the stomach, but it carries various germs and all those. And it is a little bit of stiff also. So, the hydrochloric acid is poured from the stomach wall and the hydrochloric acid kills the germs, makes the food softer and thus it is easy to be digested. Now as soon as it is finished, there is a large gland there inside the body of the human beings. In fact, it is the largest gland. What is the largest gland? The largest gland is known as liver. You always eat the mutton, obviously those who are in the vegetarian. And then we always go to the shop to purchase mutton and say, Kaliji Kedu in Hindi. And in Bengal we say, Mekke Kedu Jetu. That is nothing but the liver. It's a brownish color organ. And it is 1.5 means 1.5 one to 1.8 kg of weight. Small is 1.5, large is 1.5 kg of bread. And it produces a enzyme which is known as bile. It is basic in nature and it breaks the fat. Well, and there is a small gland which is known as gallbladder. The liver produces the bile, keeps it in the gallbladder. Because the gallbladder never allows the bile to go all the time. When you take the food to make the fat completely digestible, the gallbladder releases the bile. So it is mixed with the bile and becomes basic in nature. Then it comes down through the bile and there is a green chili like organ which is known as pancreas. This pancreas is the seat of producing various kinds of enzymes which helps in digestion of the protein, carbohydrates and many other things which breaks and makes it divine by the pancreatic juice or pancreas releases that. Then it enters into the small intestine. In the small intestine there are various parts of there, ileum, duodenum, jejunum. there are the steps of different digestion is started. And finally, then it comes to enter into a place which is a junction of the small intestine and large intestine. There is a kind of curtain like structure is there which is known as villa, P-I-L-L-I. And it allows only the selective thing, that means which is required for the body to be absorbed into the lungs. From there the absorbed and digested food goes to the lungs, there it gets the energy, oxidizes to form oxyhemoglobin in the blood, and that is the raw material for production of energy and that is sent to all cells of the body 
Why are in the same terminal called mitochondria converts it into energy? That is the way. The rest of the thing from the large intestine comes slowly and gradually and deposited in the rectum. Rectum is a place where the excess thing is stored, which is actually known as a stool, STWL stool. And then there are sensation is there. When the sensation is good, then what happens? We excrete through the anus. Parallel to the, uh, in the large intestine, on the right side of the human being, you see very small egg like structure is there, which is known as appendix. Sometimes there is infection in the appendix, and then we go to the doctor to operate. What is the function of the appendix? Right now there is no function. But earlier it used to, because the human beings were also cellulose eater, that means the green leaves and all that. So the appendix used to help it to digest properly. So this is the parts of the digestive system. Well, parts of the digestive system we have come to the mouth, having teeth, saliva, and chewing in all those stomach, stomach, small intestine, and intestine. Now, we will discuss about the microbes. The microbes are the very tiny creatures which can be seen through only the microbes. These microbes have a lot of effect on our body. What a lot of effect on our body? The microbes are useful and as well as helpful for us. And microbes occur everywhere in air, in water, in body, everywhere in your food. In the air, I told you, everywhere it is there. And then the harmful microbes cause the diseases. Ways by which it spread is again air, water, food, spoiled food differently, and contact of the persons or animals, person to person, and also by person to animal, also this is, is spread. And this is causing. Agents are known as pathogens and they go to your body and cause the disease. Well, now we have the diseases. In the diseases we have bacteria, causes tuberculosis, whooping cough, lung disease and many other diseases. Okay, like cholera, etc. Et well, we have virus. Virus is a peculiar object. When it is in favorable condition, it is living. When it is in unfavorable condition, it is dead. So that is why they are known as the borderline objects of the dead as living. So anyway, the common diseases that caught from the virus is common cold, influenza, mumps, chicken pox. Now very deadly diseases caused by virus are AIDS. You have heard the name of the AIDS. And also now it is COVID-19, that is which is called coronavirus. This is all causes of the virus. Well, now the another microbe which is known uh, as fungi. Fungi, not only they are microscopic, they are macroscopic also, they can be seen by naked eyes. There are different species are there. The fungi causes diseases are ringworm, which is commonly known as dark, and then natural food. And the fungi also causes polypus and other different kinds of diseases. And some of them are very, very harmful. Well, next is protozoa. Protozoa, we cause a lot of diseases that they are carried by mosquitoes, flies, and all. So like that, they cause malaria and then food poisoning and dysentery. All these are also done by that. And then, there are helpful microbes also there. Helpful microbes are yeast. You eat bread, cake, and sometimes you eat the wine also, not you, the cereal, you the eat wine, or brandy also. That is made, made by yeast. And the card is been produced from the milk by a kind of bacteria called Lactobacillus species. On the other hand, there are Many bacteria which are there in the nature, they form on the soil, they cause different kinds of health, and most of the things they are the 
people, the scavengers or the cleaners of the people's surrounding, they under they help the things to undergo decay and so recycling is done. And if the recycling is done, the things are clear and pollution is shared. So that is why they are the nature's scavengers. Uh, this will become for the next uh, topic. So, what we are discussing, we are discussing right now, we will discuss about the teeth. You know, in the digestive system, teeth plays a very important role, and that I have explained initially when I started the digestive system that there are four kinds of teeth are there, and we start with the teeth. Teeth we get right from the age of the six months to three years when you take bath. When you take bath, we get at six months. It starts to grow and it grows fully within three years. These are known as milk teeth or temporary teeth. The milk teeth and temporary teeth, which is 20 in number, which is 20 in number, and then they are temporary teeth. On the other hand, at the age of 12 to 30, we start growing permanent teeth. When the milk teeth fall, milk teeth fall, permanent teeth is grown. And that is 12 to 13 years of age, permanent teeth comes out. And it completes the process by 13 to uh, 17 to 25 years. Up till 25 years, we grow all the permanent teeth. And that is Kudalama is 28, Kudalama is 28. So last at last, for the permanent teeth, four more are called wisdom teeth in Swansa. And totally, that in time makes the lower jaw and upper jaw completely having 32 teeth. In one jaw, 16, two jaws, 16 plus 16, 32 in number is there. Now, you see the parts of the teeth. What's the way to do? If you take the cross section, you find the crown, and the crown is the upper part of the teeth. But the crown is covered by the hardest matter in the body, which is known as enamel, which is dazzling white in color. And the biggest part, dentine, is there inside the crown. It is not as hard as the enamel, but it is also hard. And then, the dentine, inside the dentine there are pulp. Pulp is a soft part where the blood vessels and the nerve endings are there. When you just chew something, sometimes very hot, very hot, cold thing gives you the sensation. And in that sensation, uh, the pulp is actually is possible because pulp is having nerve endings are there. And then this part is known as the root of the teeth. And it is fixed with the gum, and gum actually directly goes into the jaw where the cementum is cementing the, cementing the total process. Right now, we will see the types of teeth. Okay, in types of teeth, we have the incisor, we have canine, premolar, molar, visual teeth in upper jaw. And lower jaw also the same thing is there. In lower jaw also same thing is there. Right now, our teeth is of different types. But the teeth in some other organisms like crocodile and all, they are having same teeth. Their teeth is like saw. Have you seen the saw? Their teeth is like that same shape. So this is known as monodentition. Monodent. Dentation. They are known as monodent dentition. Example, crocodile. Crocodile. Crocodile, monodent dentition. Because they are having same kind of teeth arranged. But we don't have. We have different teeth, four kinds. So it is known as Heterodent dentition. Heterodent dentition. 
that means different kinds of kids are there. So in different kinds of kids we have a type of kids are incisor, incisors are four in the upper jaw, and these incisors are responsible for cutting or nibbling, cutting or nibbling the food. Well, the second is coming canine. You see the canine, the sharp pointed one in the upper jaw and lower jaw also. It is very prominent in the dog family and the tiger family, the dog, cat, tiger, almost all the predators of canines are very large, strong and sharp. So the, these canines, this is a responsible for cutting, canines are responsible for tearing and holding. When they jump on the plate, they hold the name with the canine. And they suck also blood with the canine. And this is how the canine is called holding, tearing and suck. Well, next is pre-bowl. <coughs> pre is also four in number. And they have to crush the food, I told you. They have to crush the food. The food is crushed very, very nicely. And then, when it is crushed, then you know the tongue starts mixing it. Then it goes to more. Morals are also four in number. So they also grind. After crushing, they are grinding that. Why they are grinding? Because as much as uh, the grinding will be done, it will be very easy to mix them very, very nicely. So that is that, that is there. And after that, there are two teeth are there which are known as the wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth is there, and this wisdom teeth comes at very late age. That means after the to complete the complete uh, the set of the teeth, it comes. The wisdom teeth also work with the molars. So we have four kinds of teeth are there. The types of incisor for cutting. And I'm for tearing and holding three molars for crushing, molars for grinding, and wisdom teeth also very well. So this is how they do, and that is present in lower jaw as well as the four incisors, two canine, four premolar, four molars, wisdom teeth are all. So lower jaw and upper jaw combines together 16 each in each jaw form and forms the 32 teeth. And this is the complete teeth of the human being. Now, as we have the teeth, we have to remember the teeth, we have to keep the, keep the care because it is working. All the times we are eating, munching and doing something, food that is being done by the tooth or the teeth. And that is to be taken care of. Okay? So, there, are, there can be various infections of the gum and teeth is there. Like, first is tooth. Tooth to give all the thousands of bacteria there inside our mouth. And it is working, thousands of bacteria working and working and they are sometimes causing the infection. The tooth decay is caused by a kind of harmful bacteria. Harmful bacteria. And then certain kinds of bacteria that actually causes the cavity and plaque. Cavity and plaque. You know the cavity means the holes are made by the action of the Enzymes, acidic enzymes released by the bacteria and then they cause the harm of the enamel and as the enamel is destroyed so they make the hole in the dentine and even deep in the palm. So the pain starts, bleeding starts and except of that they have an infection in gum is also there. Gum, gum infection, swelling of the gums, swelling of the gums then we have the bleeding and even pus function in terms that is the thing. That is all to the decay and mostly is caused by the bacteria, harmful bacteria. Well, so how to take care of this? So when we have to the decay, you go to the doctor to see and he will be giving you the medicines and all to prevent your infection. But that is the doctor's work, the expert's work. But what is your work to take the care of your teeth? How? See the care of the teeth. Number one, you have to brush the teeth twice a day. Preferably in the morning and before the bedtime. Very nicely. Cyclic order brushing is very nice for you. Mild cyclic type of brushing and brushing inside the teeth also is required. And cleaning them with the tongue cleaner and teeth joint cleaner, that then the plaque and flows also goes out. So it becomes the oral hygiene. Then regular interval 
to go to the dentist. Sometimes you feel any problem, or even if you do not feel any problem, you must take a certain time and go to the dentist to show your gum and how much your gum uh, is good enough to drink. And then we have sugar cold drinks and to avoid sugar snacks, sugar cold drinks, etc., to prevent infection. At last, milk and calcium are the very good food for the teeth because they keep the you know, time and uh, I mean, what is called uh, maximum strength of your tooth. And also, along with that, vitamin C, plenty of vitamin C is also in your this will all keep you healthy. So, this is the chapter all about. Now we are going to discuss some questions. Yes, children, at the end of the chapter, we have to discuss a little bit of questions, whatever they are in the exercise. Yet, I am giving you one information. All the question answers of the chapter has been done and it is given to loaded to school website called www.psns. In. From there you can copy here to discuss the subject equations. Question number 5a. The answer, the answer is they are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. That these are the five main food items. Number B. What is the function of the protein? The function of the protein is to build and maintain replace the tissues in our body and they are bodybuilding food they form immune system also next question we will see how fats provide energy the fats provide energy instant energy and protect vital organs keeps our body good. next one a balanced diet contains all the essential nutrients that is carbohydrates fats proteins Minerals, vitamins, and water, and profit. All these are the types of food which helps under the balanced diet to keep your body absolutely healthy and fit. Well, why don't we, I mean, stop eating the junk food? The junk food contains excess sugar, salt, or fat, and they don't have essential nutrients such as vitamins and minerals. The other effects are obesity, digestion. They spoil liver, kidney, and vital organs. And next is the hot questions. The rickshaw puller is required more food because the physical work is needed. The hot number eight here yeah, to build our body, tear needs a good amount of proteins. Proteins build the body. And number ten, building, boiling kills most of the microbes that can cause food spoilers. Thus, we boil the milk before eating. These are all the questions and we have discussed. I think you have all understood the chapter nicely. Go through nicely. Till then, goodbye.